Good morning, everyone. Uh, Beth Smith again here with B. Smith Brushworks. And uh, I know it's been a few days since I did my last video blog, um, but I'm experimenting with a different video creator and movie maker software. Uh, so I thought I would uh, play around with that today and see uh, what I get. Hopefully it will be uh, enjoyable. All right, anyway, today we're gonna talk about brushes and what brushes I use and the different types of brushes and what kind of brush applications you get using one particular brush or another. So basically I wanna start out with showing you I've got my brushes divided up into three containers. The middle container, which are predominantly black handle brushes, are what I use the most. And they probably could be a little more organized than they are because I have uh, um, flats and brights and filberts and rounds and we'll get into all of that. But this is the, these are the ones I primarily use. And this container are all brushes that uh, have seen better days or they've got a lot of painting mileage to them. They might have some uh, splayed out uh, hairs as you can see here. They're starting to get a little ragged. Um, the ferrules gotten a little fat, but I can use these for scrubbing and doing kind of more abrasive or a uh, little tougher work. Scumbling, this is a really good scumbling brush for getting in and scrubbing. And I'm going to explain some of these uh, terms that you may not understand now. And this little jar here are all my brushes that I use for water media. Now, I do not uh, mix my oil paint and acrylic painting brushes together. Uh, you always want to keep that separated. So these are my acrylic and watercolor and gouache brushes. And these are my oil brushes. And these are my, my older brushes that uh, I can be a little real rougher on. All right. And we're going to move on to... Uh, some explanation of the different type of brushes and what they're used for. We are now going to talk about uh, bristle brushes and these are a, a hog hair bristle and they're a little coarser in uh, the actual texture and feel of the hairs. These brushes uh, are used for any time you were to do any scrubbing or initial block in and laying down the initial layers on your painting. Reason you use these brushes is because of, of the coarser hair. They're a little bit more durable because whenever you're painting on a canvas, whether it's linen or cotton, it's very rough. It's almost like sandpaper. So you have to be really careful because you wouldn't want to uh, scrub over a rough surface with a, a real soft uh, synthetic haired or natural haired brush like this one. This is a uh, mongoose hair. You're going to want something uh, a little more coarse like the hog hair, it can take it. Because I'm, going to, I'm going to show you why you need a more durable brush when you're laying in this initial layer, is I'm going to demonstrate. So we're just blocking in, and I'm going to thank my student Ashley in advance uh, for this little demonstration on, on her piece here. Basically, you're going to take a thin layer of color. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But you're basically scrubbing that in. You wouldn't be able to do something like that this with your synthetic or natural hair. You could try, but you won't have a brush long. That brush will go psh, gone. 
it will tear up that hair so fast. But these hairs are made for this. And just a quick scrub in there. Can you see how hard I'm scrubbing that? Okay, hog hair bristle. Uh, if um, you were buying this in, in the store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, they sell these hog hair bristles. Uh, this particular one is a flat and from Rosemary and Company. I particularly care for uh, Rosemary. I've used a variety of them of different brands. Um, the Golden Teclon from uh, Dick Blick is another good brand to use. There's several out there. I particularly care for Rosemary. I'm not endorsing her company. I'm just telling you what I use. I, I found her brushes to be consistently good quality. All right, so back to the shapes and sizes that we're using. This is a flat, uh, and this is a filbert. The difference between a filbert and a flat is the roundness of the tip. This is a little bit more rounded tip. A flat is more squared off. And this is a long filbert. And then you have a bright, which the main difference is the height. You can see this is a longer shafted filbert. And this is a shorter bright. I particularly like the, the longer shafted brushes. They have a little bit more uh, hair here in the fural, longer coming out. Um, I, I prefer those to these. These don't hold as much paint, but they're real good for scumbling. And the sizes I'm using are 12, and I have an eight and a six and a four. So I recommend for anyone that has brushes, whether you're using the, whether you have the bristle brushes and the synthetics, two, four, six, and eight are definitely the sizes I recommend in both of those types of brushes. Now I want to talk about the differences in actual brush hairs again. We just did a demonstration in the hog hair bristle and now moving on to the softer haired brushes you have the synthetics and then you have the uh, natural hairs now an example of a natural hair would be your uh, your sable brush this is the only uh, pure sable brush that i have which is a number two round and i use this for fine details now your Pure sable hair is very, very soft hair, and it is used primarily uh, by watercolorists. They use a lot of uh, soft-haired sable brushes uh, when working with water media, and those brushes will last them a long time. They're not uh, as, ab as abusive, so to speak, with their brushes as us oil painters or um, acrylic painters. So uh, they, they can invest in you know, a few hundred dollars worth of sable brushes and they'll, they'll last years and years if they take care of them and clean them properly. Um, so uh, as an oil painter, I limit my, um, my pure sable selections down to just a, a two or three, uh, just for um, fine details, because you can get that soft blend. Now, this is an example of a synthetic. This is a uh, combination uh, imitation mongoose. So basically it's, it's various types of badger hair uh, that is supposed to um, imitate mongoose hair. And what I like about this particular synthetic uh, haired brush is that you can see when it's dry, it's a lot fuller and then when you load it up with paint you can get a nice chiseled uh, edge it'll hold a lot of paint and what i like about using uh, both of these 
brushes is you can get you get get the paint on there. Let me get some more paint. Load that up. It places the paint down well. And then you can come back with this dry brush and soften your edges. And I'm using a little bit of a bigger dry brush here, but it's mainly for the demonstration. So you can really get in there and pull that and soften those edges. And that's something that I work a lot uh, with my students on as well. We talk about uh, hard edges, lost edges, um, medium edges. So generally when you're painting and you're working in an area, you want a brush that you load up and is wet, that you apply the paint with, and then you have a dry brush usually in the same uh, hair that you're, that you're applying the paint with um, and you use it dry to uh, soften those edges. These are two more brushes that I frequently use. Uh, this is a synthetic flat. This is a synthetic filbert. This is a number four. And this is a number four. But because of the type of brush they are, there are two different series of brushes. Um, one is a ivory and the other one is from the Eclipse line. So just because uh, they're the same number doesn't always mean they're the same brush. So as you can tell, these are both number fours, but they're two completely different shape brushes. So what you have to remember when you're shopping for a brush is you have to ask yourself, what is it that I'm wanting to do? And as you can tell from uh, a quick little uh, demo that I did here is, ha, huh, I just realized this, this one looks like a tadpole. Um, I used this smaller uh, filbert to lay this paint down and I wanted to show you how I started out with it uh, flat and splayed out and I had a little bit of medium on my brush um, or in my paint to get it uh, to flow a little easier. And then as, as you're uh, coming down with your stroke, you can turn that brush and get a really fine line and go gradually fade out. So you can go from here to here with the same brush. You don't have to drop down to a, to a smaller round. You can achieve all of this with this one number four. Now, here we have the bigger, wider stroke of paint that was done with this number four flat. And as you can see, it, it, it lays down a nice broad area of paint, but also you can turn this this way. Look how thin it gets. It goes from wide to thin. So, this is especially useful if you're doing a tree. So if you needed that outer branch that's coming off from the trunk to go thinner, you would just turn your brush to get it to a flat edge and you can get you can go from this 
to this with just turning your brush. Okay, going from here to here. And you can even use the corner to just dab on small areas of maybe a different color if you were trying to uh, insert leaves or uh, small branches or bushes at the base of a tree. Um, you could just use the corner. So these brushes are very versatile. You just have to know how to handle them. You have to know what the brush can do. A lot of people want to just go like this and never turn it or tip it. This brush goes every which way. When I'm painting, this brush gets turned this way, this way, this way. So that's why when you, oil painters primarily get long handled brushes. You have long handled, you have short handled. This would be an example of a short handled brush. This is a long brush. Why do oil painters get long handled brushes? Because we like to hold them way out to get a nice far away view of the painting. We don't want to be all up in it like this. We want to be back, backed up to the painting arm's length so we can get an overall snapshot of our composition and we can see our values and uh, hue changes better when we're backed up off it. So long handle and again you don't be afraid to move that brush around. Hold it like this, like this. You can hold it like this. This is this is the way I hold my brush quite frequently. You don't want to hold your brush like a pencil. This isn't a pencil. This is a brush. So I hold it most of the time like this in my hand. So I can move my arm up and down sideways. You can see I'm moving it from my shoulder. I'm not going like this. I'm moving my brush back and forth up and down using my wrist or shoulder. Now, when you turn your brush around to do a stroke this way or this way or even back this way, now you're moving both your wrist and your shoulder. But don't be so confined that you're only holding your brush one way or using it a flat way. I even have, I even lay paint down flat like this. I'll take, I'll load my brush. And I'll drag it across like so. And even the flat side, I'll drag it across. I won't, I don't necessarily need to use the tip. I'll use that whole body of hair to get the stroke that I'm looking for. So back to the, uh, the different brushes. When you make a decision on which to buy, think about all of the applications that you're gonna be using it for. You don't need a whole ton of brushes. You can do a lot with just three or four brushes. The key is having good brushes that will hold their shape hold the paint, a good amount of paint won't splay, they'll hold up, they'll hold up good. And then understanding and learning how to handle the brush and all of the ways that you can get uh, texture and lay down paint in certain ways, holding the brush uh, in a variety of different ways. You just have to experiment. Get a piece of canvas pad like this and just play around with it. See. Put, hold the brushes, hold the brush different ways and, and figure out what will do what holding it this way or that way and you'll be surprised. But uh, that is basically brush handling 101. The last brush I'm going to talk about is this number two uh, varnish brush. So when a, once a painting has cured uh, in about six months, six to 12 months, I like to put down a about two to three coats of uh, varnish, a Danvar varnish um, or a Gamvar uh, final varnish. And 
This clear varnish protects uh, the oil painting. It protects it from uh, fading, protects it from dust and dirt. And over the years, if it needs to be retouched, it can be easily removed and the top paint layers uh, can be retouched and then re-varnished. So I will do a whole video blog uh, just on uh, varnishing a painting that's cured. Uh, but this is the brush that I use. It, it's just a number two. You can get them as big as a number three, uh, but um, I find a number two is sufficient for the sizes that I primarily work in. Um, it's, a, it's a softer brush. It's not coarse like the, the hog hair, and uh, it lays the varnish down um, on the paintings uh, very nice and evenly. All right, and uh, brush cleaning, how to take care of this investment is up next.